in the Big Head Carp um, were in the system uh, when I started back in the early 90s. Um, I believe 95, they, you know, we started seeing higher numbers. Um, and around 2000, it really jumped up. So I hate to call it a success, but for the fish, it certainly was. They, they did really well. I've heard some of the locals tell me they've seen them jump in the dam at Bernadotte. So they're definitely upstream and up those tributaries. So it only makes sense that they could make it to the Great Lakes and beyond. Well, we have them and you don't want them. And here's the data. If you look at their native range in China, just go to the literature, you find the silver carp's range over there. It goes all the way into Siberia, the Amir River. And then if you just simply draw a parallel line around the earth, the southern tip of their range in China sits about at Chicago and would run all the way north to about Hudson Bay. And so, I mean, the flag is there. It immediately goes up because it could really, it has the potential of upsetting the entire salmon fishery. When, you, when you're talking about food chain issues and a, a large critter like this that consumes a lot of food with a tremendous biomass that takes a, a tremendous amount of food out of the water and it has to come from somewhere and with natural reproduction being uh, probably way more prolific than the, the, the stocking that we're doing to maintain the salmon and, and trout it wouldn't take long to, to displace the fishery and create havoc for the entire Great Lakes. We're here on the Illinois River because the Asian carp has proliferated in great numbers in this tributary to the Mississippi River. Carp are migrating north towards the Great Lakes because they're a cold water seeking fish. And the uh, threat that they pose to the Great Lakes being uh, just enormous planktivores. They consume up to 40 to 60 percent of their body weight uh, each day in plankton which is considerable given that they weigh up to 60 to 100 pounds. Of course, plankton constitutes the bottom of the food chain for every other fish species that lives in the Great Lakes and indeed in the Illinois and Mississippi rivers. We've seen a huge amount of displacement of other species. In fact, 95% uh, of the biomass in the yeah. Illinois River where we'll be today is made up of Asian carp. And we're very, very concerned about preventing the passage of this exotic species into the Great Lakes via the Chicago Ship and Sanitary Canal. We have an electrical barrier that's been installed in that canal in an effort to prevent that passage. The Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal is the only hydraulic connection between the Mississippi River Basin and the Great Lakes. That makes it a very important place in terms of exchange of nuisance species such as the Asian carp. An electrical barrier is desirable because it can restrict the movement of fish, but it doesn't restrict the flow of water or, move, or movement of boats in the canal. There are 13 cable electrodes across the bottom of the canal. A DC current is pulsed through those electrodes, creating an electrical field in the water. It is not dangerous either to fish or to people. What happens is the fish swim into the barrier, the field strength of the electricity becomes stronger and stronger, and they begin to feel uncomfortable, and they turn around and go back out without crossing the whole way through the barrier. There was never a project on this scale conducted before. So this, this is a one-of-a-kind attempt to create a barrier like this. For once, we actually have an opportunity to take some action before a species invades the Great Lakes. We've been battling the sea lamprey for 50 years, and we spent in upwards of $250 million in direct costs just to battle the sea lamprey. They said the cost of dealing with zebra mussels alone are in the billions of dollars. So when you think about the, um, the fact that a barrier on the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal, which could cost about $8 million, it's a lot of money. But when you weigh that against what the impact would be on the Great Lakes if these fish get in, and it's an easy choice. So, you know, the, the, the investment that we make on the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal to keep the species from migrating into Lake Michigan is a very sound investment. The, the Asian carp, to me, has actually been something that's undone what I and my colleagues have tried to do for the last 20 years. Uh, we were looking at trying to, to uh, remove dams, open up floodplains, in other words, expand habitats for native fish. 
and now these things come along and we've got to second think all that. It's possible in time that these would sort of settle back into uh, the background, if you will, and be more like the common carpet. But for the rest of our natural lifetime, these things are going to be a problem and it'll take It'll take 50, 100 years to, for, for that settling back to ever happen. And so the sad part with our children and grandchildren is they're going to look at these Asian carp in time and think that they're part of the natural system and really not know. And that's really sad.